The end of Talisman is nigh! <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Bottled Imp. Exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter and today we are taking a look at The Harbinger, which is a what I like to call a mini expansion for Talisman. It's the fourth edition revised, so you will need that base game if you want to play with this expansion. Now obviously it's not the end of Talisman, I just tricked you there. But it is the Harbinger, and so obviously what that means is they foretell the end of the world. Well, is it really the end of the world? Let's find out. <laughs> the Harbinger expansion for Talisman. Just to reiterate, if I can say that word, you do need the base game of Talisman. We have done a review of that, and we've done other reviews as well for the some other expansions for the game. So, what do you get in the little mini box? Well, actually, you get quite a lot. Just going to go through the components very briefly, as quick as I can. You get 32 Omen cards, which are these. They're in four sets of seven cards each. You also get 10 Terrain cards, which are these ones here. And you get various varieties of Terrain cards. You also get two Alternative Ending cards, which actually change how the end condition, the winning victory conditions, of the game are played. And also you get 75 Harbinger cards, which are these. And you also get three character cards, which are these here. Plus you get the three figures to match. And you also get a Harbinger sheet, plus you get the Harbinger figure as well. And we'll go into detail about what exactly you do with these. So, what do you do with them? Well, at the, beginning, blah, 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 at the beginning of the game, I'll start so I'll finish. You need to do a little bit of setup. It's very quick. The whole theme, as I say, is that the world is coming to an end and the Harbinger is foretelling that. So what you first need to do is, they say, to place the Harbinger figure, and I'll just show you the figure right here. There he is. Now, just to point out that all the figures do come unpainted. I've actually painted my figures, uh, hopefully to a good standard, kind of. And what you do is they say that you place this figure on its own sheet, and that is placed at the side of the game board. Then what you do is you will take your new spells. Now these spells are, I'll just show you a few. They are actually exactly like the regular spells from the other, uh, you know, from all the other expansions and the base game. So what you do is you will take these and you will simply be shuffling these into the deck, the spell deck. There you go, those are the new spells. Plus, you will then decide which one of the omen cards that you're going to use. Now, obviously, on your first game, you don't really know anything about them. So when we played our first game, we decided we just picked one at random, to be honest. Um, they all look very good, though. And what you do is they are numbered. So as you can see here, that one says the first omen. And then we've got the second omen, etc., etc right down to number seven. And what they say is that you keep them in order. So you'll have number seven at the bottom, then number six, five, four, etc. And what you do is you place them face up. Now they do come with a bit of flavor text, just to kind of give you a bit of an idea of what actually is going to be in these omens. And that is the first one that you keep face up and again you put them by the side of the board. Now just to point out, all the cards that you do get do come uh, with a little symbol that they've put in the rule sheet here. And again the rule sheet is very good for those of you that have got talisman expansions, they are always clear and precise. And you've got here this little raven and th that symbol is printed pretty small on most of the cards but they're on all of the expansion cards so if you did want to take them out because you didn't want to play for whatever reason with the Harbinger in one game, then you can do so and all the expansions have their own little symbol. And I think that's a really, really good little help if you did want to decide not to play with a certain expansion. So that's the first thing you do with the setup. You decide, you shuffle the spells, you put the figure onto the Harbinger card and then you also decide which deck of Omen cards you're going to use. Then 
I'm going to explain the harbinger and how he actually comes into the game. So he starts off the board, then what happens is when there is an event card, and that can be from any expansion or the base game, so say somebody lands on a space, it says draw a card, they draw from the adventure deck or any of the other uh, expansion adventure deck type cards, you, and it's an event, you will resolve that, but what happens is the Harbinger then lands on that space where that player's character is. And that's it, that's how the Harbinger actually gets into the board. It's not on the inner region though, he can never go into the inner region. So, that's the Harbinger on the board. Then what happens is the character, the player will then resolve their turn as normal. If a character lands on the Harbinger though, then what happens is they must roll a die to see what happens to them. So you've got the list here on the card. And like in Talisman, one to three is normally pretty bad for you. Five, six, and seven, you might get a little reward. So there's various different things depending on what you actually roll on the die. That can catch you out. So it's a little bit like, uh, well, it is like the Reaper expansion where death does the same thing and you need to roll a die, and also the Blood Moon expansion where, again, the werewolf, if the werewolf lands on you, you need to roll the die. But this time, if you land on the Harbinger, you actually have to roll the die and take your consequences. Then the other thing is that um, if there is an instruction, once the Harbinger is on the board, if there is an instruction when a character goes to a space to draw adventure cards or any cards of the same type, then you must draw, and you're in the same region, I should point out, as the Harbinger, then you must draw from this deck here, which is the Harbinger cards. And for example, well, this is an event, this one here, so if that was pulled out and the Harbinger wasn't on the board, he would come onto the board, and you would just draw from these Harbinger cards if the Harbinger is in the same region as, as you. Now again, these are like the base game adventure cards. They're, you know, they've got magic objects in, objects, followers, that kind of thing, money, enemies, and they are like the adventure cards, so you will start playing with those, but obviously they're themed all around the Harbinger and Doom and the, the end of the world is, is happening now. The other thing to point out in this deck is there are objects and followers that are cursed, and hopefully you can read that there, you can see the text there. These ones are cursed, and what that means is you must take these objects and followers if they are cursed. Followers, there aren't really a limit to how many you can have, but with object, if you've reached your carrying limit, you have to take this, so you have to discard a non-cursed object which is obviously not good news. Now these cursed ones aren't too bad, um, it's just that you have to have them. Now if you had four, you know, or, or your limit of objects and they were really cool and you didn't want to drop one, then unfortunately you do. If you have all of your uh, objects are cursed, then you can discard another cursed one, obviously. And you can sell these cursed objects as well, so you're not totally shackled with them if you don't want them. So that is the Harbinger. Now, the way the Harbinger comes off the board, because it, sometimes it can come off the board, is it actually ties in with these Omen cards. And these Omen cards, what happens is they will have an event that triggers them. And something will trigger them. And I won't go through what triggers them, but it will say remove the top card from the Omen deck. So you will then remove it, and then the next one face up is then in effect, that's the omen. So you will read the omen. And what happens is, as soon as one of these cards is discarded, the harbinger goes back to his card, and that's he's off the game. But of course, if an event is drawn, then he comes back onto the board, as we've previously talked about. Now this one here, I'll just read this one actually. This one says Armageddon, and it is actually each character in the same region as the harbinger must lose a fate. And then equally it says here, whenever a character defeats another character, he may replenish a fate. So there's swings and roundabouts, there's plus and negatives to these cards. And what you'll do is, the other thing that you've got to be careful for is that if too many of these, in fact, if all of them are revealed and they're discarded, they're all discarded, that's the end of the game, no one wins everybody loses. So there is a bit of a co-op thing because you do want to then 
make sure there is a trigger where you can put these back onto the deck and cover them up. So you kind of, if there's an opportunity for you to cover them up again and take them from the discard pile and put them back onto the deck, you want to take it because nobody wants to lose, everyone wants to win. So those are the Omen cards, that's the Harbinger. Also in this little mini expansion, you do have two alternate cards. Now these ones are specific to the actual game. You have to, in order to play these cards, you do need to be playing the Harbinger expansion. So that's that one there, and then we've got the Armageddon Crown, and that's that one there. So with these ones though, and all alternate ending cards, that just changes the conditions of how you win. Now there are a certain mechanism here, I'll just show you. If you've got a card with a star in the corner, that means it's placed face up in the center of the board and everybody knows that actual winning condition. Everybody knows that, that's not a secret. There are some that have a moon in the corner. Now this is from the Firelands expansion. And what that means is you can take all the ones with the moon in the corner, shuffle them up, choose one at random, keep it face down, and that is a surprise ending. So you don't know what end condition is gonna be. So obviously if you know the end condition like these ones, then you can actually tailor your strategy throughout the game to try and meet those end conditions. So, two new alternate ending cards. We also have terrain cards and there'll be triggers throughout the game where it says place a terrain or a specific terrain like this one, the runes, onto a space. And what happens is that wipes out what that space is. So if it was the tavern, then you wouldn't be allowed to actually roll the die in the tavern. It gets replaced by whatever this says. And this one says draw one card. So the game will change. You've got here the chasm as well. And there are various other different terrain cards in here and the terrain cards can be taken off the game as well. So again, there's an ever-changing board. And finally, we have the three new characters. Hurrah! We always like to get new characters in Talisman. We have the Celestial, if that's how you pronounce it. He's an angel angelic type character. Again, they've all got their unique special abilities. We have the Ascendant Divine, who looks pretty cool. And we also have the third figure is the Possessed. And this one I particularly like because he's got a huge, massive, out of proportion, big red arm with a claw. So he's obviously had some sort of possession going on. And I'll just show you the, the little minis that I've painted just for interest sake, really. They're really cool. I do like the talisman uh, miniatures. They're very well done. Um, not sure about my paint jobs, but they are very well uh, sculpted. I do like them. And for me, they just add that little extra flavor to the game, especially if you paint them. The old, uh, I think, I don't know when they started doing little mini figures, but certainly editions one and two, it was just a little cardboard uh, that had the figure on there. These add a little bit more flavor, as I say. So what do I think about it? I absolutely loved it. We loved playing with this one, especially the fact that the Omen, if, they, if it reaches seven discarded, everybody loses. That added that extra bit of tension. So you had to work together to try and make sure that the deck didn't run out. So that added, you know, just that bit of tension. Will it happen? Will we all lose? Plus, all the Harbinger cards are really beautifully, I'll just show you a few of them here. They're really, again, the illustrations on them are fantastic. And these ones are really, really themed around that doom and the end of the world is happening now. And you've got all your usual things like the enemies and magic objects. And I really do like the extra little cursed aspect to it that you have to take these objects. Again, that just, you know, is there to get in your way, really. But again, these cursed objects aren't that bad. It's just that you have to take them. Um, so again, really love them. It's always good to get new spells. And I really like the idea of the Harmager it comes off and on the board because you never quite know what's going to happen. Really, really love this. Totally recommend this. This is one of the, one of the best uh, expansions, I think, for Talisman. So there we go. The Harbinger. The end of the world is nigh. <laughs> fellow imps, fellow imps, fellow imps. There we go. We have the Harbinger expansion for Talisman. As I say, it's one of my favourite ones, actually. Really good fun, really adds that extra layer of tension. 
which is always good in Talisman. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed the review. We do have other Talisman reviews. We've covered quite a lot of them now. We were kind of running out of expansions. Obviously, that's a good thing. And uh, a little bit of news. There is another expansion due to come out very, very soon. It's called The Cataclysm, and that is going to be a big one. Until the next time, fellow imps, remember, keep it unreal.